What is up, guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Once again, we are back for the My Team Journey, episode number 10 for the Austrian Grand Prix. Remember, this round is a sprint race weekend, meaning we have less practice and more action. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, see plenty more F123 content. I uploaded a ranked video earlier today. Hopefully you guys will give that a, a go. Maybe whet your appetite for co-op career mode, which will be coming fairly soon. I've been asked this question a lot. Uh, we will restart the co-op career mode on F123 when the next patch comes out. There's a big glitch with equal cars uh, and it would completely ruin our playthrough if we could just win races in a back market car. So, uh, yeah, speaking of winning races in a back market car, that's what we're <laughs> going to attempt to do today. Um, although this thing isn't exactly a back market car anymore, is it? We've been absolutely flying. We are solidly in the midfield, overtaken by a couple of teams who are building momentum on the development side. We seem to be building momentum on the track. Three podiums in three races has been absolutely nuts. We now head to Austria, which again is a good track for me. I feel like I'm very strong here. So I, I, I don't see any reason why we probably can't get a top five in this race if we outperform the car, if we nail the setup, if we just have a clean weekend. But that ultimately is down to the F1 gods, isn't it? Getting a clean weekend is a lot easier said than done. It seems to be happening easy for us at the moment. We're, we're on good form. Car seems to be running well. There's been no reliability dramas, which has been great. So uh, let, let's pray for more of that in the future. Time to choose our rival. Uh, wow. Between Charles Leclerc or Carlos Sainz, that seems pretty ridiculous. But um, I guess it's just been basing on where we've been finishing lately. So there we go. Uh, we did put a major weight redistribution upgrade on the car. That'll go on in many races time. We're in a position now where we're able to attract a new sponsor to the team. Head on over to the corporate tab and select the sponsor screen to choose who we should approach. And this one happened really sneakily. We somehow got a claim level 10 and uh, now that opens up a secondary sponsor, a sponsor in which we've been waiting for for the longest time. Uh, th this is really going to help the cash flow and I think we should go for not a performance results based sponsor i think we should go for something that's a little bit easier to achieve to just guarantee that we get those weekly resources we get those goals after every race and it says uh the objective is to have a clean race so we're going with distort and uh i, I think that should be pretty achievable between the two of us myself and liam so uh yeah hopefully we can have that extra uh cash influx every round and that'll make us get closer to the facility upgrades which we need so uh just uh reproportioning the upgrade not the other the upgrades the sponsors throughout the car we can do the sponsor relations upgrade for the team acclaim to uh make that grow 10 percent quicker which is what we've also been waiting for but the timing isn't the best right now because we've got contract negotiations coming up i think in the next episode of career mode Potentially at the end of next episode or the start of the one after. So I'm not sure we'll be able to get uh, spend 3 mil and then save up enough money to get a decent teammate. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to save my money and I'm going to see where we're at in, you know, two weeks time when we do have to get a new teammate. And then whatever cash we have left over will go towards the facilities. It's, just, it's a necessary evil and I would like to have a teammate that can back me up in the second half of the season given that we have a really good car behind us uh we're gonna do fuel efficiency uh we've been putting this upgrade off for a while it's an 82 percent discount pretty much a free upgrade at this point so we'll whack that on i think we also got our engine power upgrade go on the car uh while we were skipping time just a few seconds ago there it is so uh yeah some decent little gains there tire wear engine power and general maintenance uh in terms of reliability on the car and that means we haven't really moved forwards. We, we, our car is better, but relative to those around us, the only people we've caught are Mercedes, who haven't moved since about the Monaco Grand Prix upgrade-wise. Red Bull upgrade, big upgrades for Aston Martin, who shoot to second best car. McLaren have been upgrading really well as of late, and Haas shoots up way up into the midfield and starting to put pressure on us. So it's interesting developments that's going on right now in uh, this... Well, the whole grid, really. It's It's... 
fairly close, it has to be said. Um, it's, it's not like one team is, is miles ahead of the other, or there's one team who's miles behind uh, the rest. It is uh, relatively close in the grand scheme of things, but here we go then. Time for qualifying for the Austrian Grand Prix. Uh, much like the last race, it looks a little bit sinister in terms of weather, but uh, not to worry, it's just a bit overcast and uh, we will have ourselves a dry session. With that said, I probably would have I probably would have relished in having some uh, interchangeable conditions to save some some softs for not only the sprint race but the main Grand Prix itself. And uh, you know we might be on the cards for another two stop, but I think I think I'm going to settle down this race. I think I'm going to go back to my roots and uh, well, just what I know and, and just do a one stop strategy and kind of see how that works. We are going to be a little bit limited on tires this weekend. Uh, actually, being able to keep a hold of them will be will be quite tricky given the amount of uh, proper sessions we have this weekend. So um, yeah, but we will still make sure we have a fresh set of softs for the race if we need it. First run is done, and we only did one run in Q1, by the way. I was pretty confident in the lap that I did. I felt pretty good, and was it ever. Just about, just about got us through to Q2. Liam was only seven thousandths of a second away from making it into Q2 this time and knocking us out. That is absolutely huge. Very unlucky for Liam to not get the lap in. Again, he misses out on Q2. Q2. Uh, that's the Q2 results, by the way. Pretty uneventful. We did get P5. Uh, we did uh, quite a bit of running in that session. We did a used run on uh, the Q1 tyres, and then we put on a new set of tyres at the end of Q2 to deliver a top five lap, which was pretty satisfying in the end. But I don't feel like the pace is as good as, the, as, good as what it was the last few rounds. Uh, Canada and Monaco, I definitely felt quicker than what I do at the moment. Um, there's There's a good step between us and the top teams as they should be but I really feel like top five is probably our maximum in terms of qualifying four tenths up on our previous best this is not a brand new set of soft compound tires uh, relative to the very used Q1 set which we set our banker time uh, only a few minutes to go but uh, yeah qualifying is now complete currently running in P9 a six tenth improvement would see me jump up the order I hope, I hope quite massively through the last corner. It's a lot more open that corner this year. Open the DRS up to the line. It's a 7 tenth improvement, which gets me fourth place. Fourth place on the grid for the Austrian Grand Prix and only two and a half tenths shy of pole in the end. That is a very, very good lap from me there. I, I don't think I could have done much better. We're looking at hundreds, a tenth at best in terms of the lap I did. That was a very good one there. We hit our ceiling very early on in qualifying. It had to be said. There wasn't there wasn't much gains I was finding after I'd say Q2. It was really just track evolution that was that was making up the difference really for us. And uh, yeah, we got a good time in at the end, which is uh, ultimately what mattered. Moving on to Saturday now where we have practice two, only two practice sessions. Got through our resource pro po points programs. And I uh, got the discount, so that's all lovely. What I don't like, what I don't like about this, this format is you have to run your good engine components in practice. Not a fan of that. But uh, we got them anyway. Uh, we're going to probably spend our resource points after qualify, after the sprint race. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we do. Time for the first race, the sprint. Forget pit stops, forget fuel management. It's pedal to the metal all the way here as we get ready for today's sprint. I feel like taking a gamble here, guys. Uh, all my gambles so far this season have worked for the most part, I want to say. We're going to take another one today. In this Grand Prix, I, I think it's going to start us on mediums. But I, because of the tyre upgrades, I am going to chance it. And I'm going to start on a set of soft compound tyres. It's two seconds quicker than running the hards. It's still slower than mediums. But the initial gain that we'll get from soft compound tires, and given our close proximity to the race leaders, should mean 
that we get track position at the start of this race. That is what I'm looking forward to. We're going to lower the tire pressures. I've noticed the tires get very hot on F123. So lowering that will hopefully mean we're a bit more of a factor. But yeah, I, I want to strike with my soft compound tires, get myself into the lead. We should be quick for the first like six, seven laps of the race. Uh, we will die off towards the end. That's for sure. And we're not, only, we're not the only person doing it. The McLarens are also following the strategy as well. But if we can get into the lead, park the bus, I feel like we'll be on for a better result than P4, which is where we're at. So taking a chance. Let's see if it works out. Five red lights, and we are underway for the Saturday sprint here at the Austrian Grand Prix. Nice start for us, getting straight past Max Verstappen as we head into turn one. He's uh, having a little uh, counter-attacking move at us through that corner. And uh, he manages to not overtake us. Settling into the slipstream of Sergio Perez. That Red Bull, as you can see, is very quick. Here comes with Stappen up the inside into turn three. I didn't see that one coming. I was just chilling in behind Perez, focusing on a better exit. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I was nearly overtaken there. But thankfully, Max gets a terrible exit out of turn three which gives us the breathing space we need to uh, get back in the rhythm and into this fight with uh, the leaders. But, you know, first lap, it's it's a stark contrast to Canada. Canada, we were absolutely flying, overtaking cars left, right, and center. Today, we have the better tire, and uh, we're actually not managing to, to make it work for us. So you can see quite, que quite clearly, I can't talk today, I don't know why. You can clearly see that the pace just isn't there relative to the last race, and... Now we have a massive accident. This could be a red flag. We could have a red flag on our hands in this uh, sprint race, or it could even be a safety car. I would take either or at this stage. Ocon retiring with an engine failure. And uh, I think it was Yuki Tsunoda with uh, just wrong place, wrong time. It was Ocon kind of moving over to the racing line, and then the Alpha Tauri had already committed to its line, and they uh, they either crash into the... Into the Alpine, or they crash on their own by running off the circuit onto the grass. It's uh, the tough choice to uh, to force someone to make. VSC has been deployed, and that kind of helps us. That does help us in terms of getting our tyres to the end. It's just a little reprieve. Tyres can cool out a little bit, and uh, will mean that you know our our tyres will not fall off the clip for another half a lap uh, relative to what they would have otherwise. So. That, that could be a big help for us in this race. But look at the leaders. They're getting away. They're battling, which is going to be our saving grace in this race. Otherwise, we just don't have that pace. Even on the softs, these tires should still be at their best. They're not below, or they're not above 25% yet. So this is our pace, guys, this weekend. It's uh, about two tenths, maybe three tenths shy of uh, the front running guys. And I, if I had to put it down to something, I'd probably say it's downforce. We seem to be very quick on the straights. But I lose a lot of time to them in the middle sector, particularly through those uh, two fast sweeping left-handers uh, right in the, the middle part of the lap. So, yeah, it's going to be tough. We're going to have to hope for these guys to, to battle some more. If I'm close enough with DRS, I think I won't have any problems overtaking. But it's just a case of staying close uh, through the middle sector and then, and then being close enough on the straights, this part of the track, to actually strike. And thankfully... That battling with uh, Sainz has meant that we're actually getting up the inside of Perez here. Up the inside into turn four. And that is second place for the taking. Thank you very much. Another yellow flag. Someone else is retiring. I think that's Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. That's going to be huge in the context of his race weekend. It's all going to fall apart. He will be starting from the back of the grid tomorrow and missing out on today's points. Meanwhile, we're going for the overtake on Sainz just in case there's a safety car or a red flag that would guarantee us the win. But we get through as uh, Verstappen pulls over to the side with the replay there. Anytime I see a car retiring or a potential yellow flag, I am going to go for moves just in case there's a red flag or a, a safety car or what have you. Uh, too many times last week in Creator Series, I was caught out by just letting someone go and then immediately after a safety car would come out. So we don't want to be on the receiving end of, uh, yeah, just, just not having track position. So now we are where we are, where we're meant to be, fighting at the front. Um, unable to contain science, unfortunately, uh, for too long, but hopefully we can fight back with a bit of ERS. We are a bit low at this stage. Perez attacking us in a turn one. Science goes defensive. 
Science went defensive there. He, he was under threat from Perez for sure. But uh, that would have been a crazy move if Perez tried to dive on both of us at the same time. Compromise Science. We get the better exit out of turn one. And now we're running side by side into turn three. And uh, we're going to go for the switchback here. We're going to let him uh, give us the DRS. And we're going to punch it out of turn three. Up into overtake. Up into overtake. We're not going up into overtake. We're going to see if we can get the move done without using the battery. And that would be incredible. Leaves the space. Bad exit from the Ferrari. And that is a gift. That is a straight up gift from Carlos Sainz. Now he's under pressure from his teammate and Sergio Perez as well. Through the middle sector you can see. Even though we have the lead of the Grand Prix. We've got no dirty air. No one slowing us up in front. Just how, how much we are struggling through those two corners. So some definite adjustments will have to be made for the Grand Prix. We need some more front wing. We can't increase the rear wing. Park Ferme conditions do apply from uh, qualifying onwards. As you can see, this is the three guys behind us all squabbling over P2, allowing me to run away and get some breathing space, I suppose. But I'm, I'm not going to break DRS. It's just, it's not going to be possible. We don't have the pace and we certainly don't have the tires to do that anymore. So um, it's just a case of playing this smart. Even though we're not the quickest car, we can be the smartest driver and uh, still come out on top here if we play our cards right. And to do that, we need to be second on the roads. We can't fall too far back in this train and we need to save our battery. So let's uh, make sure we're well positioned uh, heading on to the last lap of the Grand Prix. Looks like we're going to go for the move here with some overtake and take back P1 from Charles Leclerc, teasing him in the process uh, about how we just took him to school. But uh, we're going to head on to the last lap with us in the lead of the race. This is a risky strategy, given that uh, those behind will be punching their battery full send and will have DRS as well, but I'm going to back myself. No! No, 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 Ben! I thought that was the last lap! When I filmed that at the time, I thought that was the last lap. That's, that's why I shouldn't do these videos at 3 a.m. A little bit overtired, didn't know, didn't have the greatest awareness, and now we're under pressure with no battery heading on to the actual last lap of this race. Everyone fighting over P2, heading into turn three. Nearly got clattered in the dive bomb by Sergio Perez. Nice exit there. They're all tangled up by each other, and that allows me to run away over a second now. So somehow, despite uh, nearly fluffing that up on the penultimate lap, we have actually managed to build out a lead because everyone was squabbling so hard for P2 in the end to have a pot shot at me. But for the second time this season, we are going to win a race. Top job, mate. Top job. Yes. I was a bit worried about this one at the start of the weekend, but man, you pulled through. Thank you. Well done. There we go, guys. As I said earlier, I wasn't the quickest car out there. I wasn't the quickest driver, but we certainly were one of the smartest and we made sure to manage our resources to be well placed for the fight and the end game of that sprint race. We take maximum points, eight points heading into the main Grand Prix, and that is pole position as well. Our first pole position in career mode, and we get maximum points heading into this race. If by some miracle we could somehow convert this win into another win on Sunday, I mean, that would make our constructors. I mean, we could pretty much chill out in terms of like point scoring for the rest of the season and probably finish in the top six seven potentially it's, i know there's still a lot of races to go but uh our our points tally is looking amazing so far and it means that we have a lot of comfort heading into season two where we can start focusing on next year's car difficulty check <laughs> no scratch time for the austrian grand prix this is it then race day in spielberg for this year's austrian grand prix not long to go before our drivers hurtle off the line and into the first turn, the Nicky Lauda curve. It was renamed in 2019 in memory of one of Formula One's most beloved figures. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Benjamin lines up on pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Sainz, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Joe, Gasly, Hamilton, Oscar Piastri, Magnussen, Bottas, Albon, Stroll, 
Liam Lawson, Sargent, De Vries, Holkenberg, Sonoda, Verstappen, Sonoda. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. Oh, it's going to be a tough day for Max Verstappen, but if anyone can do it, it will be that man. Either way, welcome to the grid of the Austrian Grand Prix. Today, I don't think we're going to do anything crazy in terms of tyre strategy. I, I think we're going to do the soft medium, uh, though we are going to have a look and see if soft medium soft is, is quicker, 10 seconds slower. Uh, given that we are in the front of the field, we don't exactly want to put ourselves in traffic. The big uh, difference between here and Canada, shorter pit lane in Canada, and we were already at the back, so it didn't really matter too much. But we'll play from the front and we'll save our tyres. The formation lap gets underway and every driver will be looking to settle in for the race ahead, making sure that their car is ready for the battle once the lights go out. Also, we're already at the front, so we can slipstream and DRS train. Uh, all the other quick boys in this race. It's going to be my sole goal today to not let the leaders get away so that I can get towed along and, and still finish in the top five. I've got to be realistic. We've qualified on pole position. We got lucky in the sprint. There's going to be more contenders fighting their way through the field with safety cars, maybe even red flags. Who knows? But we've got to have our wits about us and make sure we pick our battles when they come. Here we go, Austrian Grand Prix, 10th round of the season, and it is go here in Spielberg. Looks like a pretty decent start relative to the Ferraris. We're going to be uncontested heading into turn one. And for the first time, this whole career mode, I've got nothing to commentate on. There's, there's, no, there's no drama, there's no one around me. I can just chill out, find my feet, find my rhythm, and uh, burn a bit of battery as I quest to uh, run away. Oh, there's the drama. It, it's happened immediately. Leclerc straight on the inside into turn three. I want a drama, and I got it. Big old dive bomb into there. We made sure to leave some space uh, to not get clattered into. That was uh, that was a surprise one from Leclerc. So uh, the AI got cheesed yesterday. They are going to be fighting harder today to make sure that they can uh, secure their ascendancy in the Constructors' Championship, they being Ferrari. They, uh, they definitely want to capitalize on the Red Bulls being a little bit down the order. Mercedes not there either. We've got a McLaren in Norris up in P5, gatekeeping uh, the rest of uh, the big boys in this sport. So uh, let's see if we can pull away from Lando. Perez has already got him, though Norris is fighting back somehow. So um, that's a ding-dong battle we'll need to keep an eye on. But I guess my aim will be to try and build some kind of a gap between that top five, top six battle, or, well, P7 downwards, so that we can emerge into a nice gap. Because I think the key today is going to be, again, undercutting and uh, making sure that we don't get undercut ourselves. Because if someone breaks outside of a second to us, we're not catching them. We're not catching them. We have to make sure that we're the first to react. We have to be proactive. Yeah, well, I don't even know why I said react. We have to be proactive in uh, our strategy and make sure we're the first onto the mediums. And it's going to be a long road ahead. It's going to be a tough one. Hopefully there's a safety car, an early safety car to make the tire life a little bit easier for us. Early doors. But this lap here is actually my fastest lap of the entire Grand Prix. A 1 minute 6.014. And uh, I, I know you might be confused why I don't go any faster for the rest of the race. Well, that's just how good the softs are. And uh, we're going to put the mediums on, or intend to put the mediums on, fairly early. And, uh, you know, they're going to be taking on a, a big old workload to get to the end. And we, we don't exactly want to be pushing them too hard when we get on fresh rubber. But uh, we'll, we'll play that as we see fit in this race. Maybe, maybe I do go faster on the mediums. Maybe I'm just <laughs> lying to you. We'll have to wait and find out. Yellow flag, local yellows. We head into turn one. It's Carlos Sainz in the other Ferrari who's having dramas in the main Grand Prix. It was a snap yesterday, uh, foregoing only a handful of points. But today, Sainz is giving up a big bundle of points by retiring, stretching that engine too far. And the Ferrari is out of this Austrian Grand Prix. Like I said yesterday, we're going to make sure we try and get this move done just in case there's a, a safety car that comes out. So we go for the move straight away into P1. Doesn't look like there's any activity between the stewards, uh, you know, forcing forcing their hand and bringing about a uh, interruption with this race. Sergio Perez up the inside of 
Not only myself, but the Ferrari as well. That was a bit clumsy from the Red Bull driver. We had to take evasive action, go off the track. We got a warning for that as well, no less. So that's put our race in a little bit of jeopardy. Not overly nice for us. As you can see, we're getting absolutely <laughs> biffed from pillar to post in the turn three. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. I, I, it's, it's just an absolute mess. An absolute mess. And here's the replay. Um, I, I tried to let the Ferrari go purely for DRS reasons. Uh, I didn't expect to get my ears boxed in by both the Aston Martin and the and the Red Bull as well. Oh, and <laughs> Leclerc's bowled the wide as well. So we're into the lead of the Grand Prix once again. We'll have to fight for this one as we head into this left-hander. This is the one corner on the track. One of two, really, where we're quite weak. So I didn't expect to be able to... To, to retake the lead there. So we'll tuck back in for now. Make sure Alonso doesn't get us. Again, same principles as yesterday apply. We want to be the second car in the train just to make sure we're not at uh, the mercy of AI ahead battling too much. We kind of want to be the gatekeeper between uh, the rest and, the, and then the race leader. Because if, if, if we let, say, two or three cars go and, um, you know, two people start battling really hard over second place... They could lose like a second or two and then the race leader gets away. So we don't want to, we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure we're in control or somewhat control in this race. A little bit deep into turn four as we tried to re-overtake Leclerc without using too much of our battery. I'm trying also not to get too excited here, guys. I know there's a lot of side-by-side -side action going on here, which is, which is great. But I really want to look after my tires. We want to make sure that they don't die in the last few laps of this stint. As we uh, have a little check up from the engineer, what's going on? Six laps until our pit window. So lap 15 is the scheduled pit stop. So we want to make sure we are in by then for the mediums and uh, keep a very close eye on people to make sure we're not getting undercut in this race. So still second in the train, still sticking to the game plan at this stage. The cars behind are very quick when they've got some DRS and when they feel like overtaking. Uh, especially on the start finish straight. I've noticed uh, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's a bit tricky. We go around the outside of Leclerc there, making sure not to overexcite the rear tires too much. And look at this. Leclerc is in very early on in this race. I said we want to, wanted to prevent the undercut, but I didn't see a pit stop this early coming. Lap 12, three laps before my recommended pit, pit stop window was set to open. Oh my word, we are in trouble. We're going to have to respond at the end of this lap. We're going to have to hope that Leclerc, and he is catching up to the back of the back markers. Leclerc is last on the minimap, and he will get held up by back marker cars. But we need to respond straight away and make sure that he doesn't get away too much in this pack. So fair play to Ferrari for actually going aggressive. And I think this is actually a really good play from them. This is a great strategy. If it worked, if we can get through the traffic... You know, Leclerc's going to be home and dry in this race. He's going to be absolutely flying. And I'm still going to be doing the same thing, defending P2 for the rest of the race. So, yeah, if he gets outside of a second, and it looks like he is at this stage, then um, I, I'm defenseless. I, I can't do anything about Leclerc's pace unless there's a significant tyre difference between the two of us. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Leclerc gets tangled up with an Alpha Tauri, Nick DeVries, and we go past three cars there in one corner just by getting a good exit. They all got tangled up with each other, uh, trying to squeeze each other too much, and we saw through for P17 in this race. P17, yes, it may be, but that is the effective lead of the Grand Prix at this point. Meanwhile, we've got Lando fighting Nando, for the on-track lead of the Grand Prix. These guys are hanging it out tough on their old soft compound tires, fighting each other, which is something me and Leclerc didn't do, by the way. And they are making our strategy work, even though we're in heavy traffic right now. They're, they're battling in their old tires. It's meant that we're just, we're absolutely fine. We, we've undercut them by a few seconds, so they shouldn't be an issue in this race, at least in the short term. With their fresher tires, they will be a problem in the long term. Halfway stage, or approaching the halfway stage in this race, trying to get a move done on uh, Logan Sargent. I was a bit too desperate there. Went too deep under brakes and nearly lost the position with a switch back to Sargent. Sargent now holds up Leclerc, who is now boxing. 
Leclerc isn't boxing, but he's stuck behind him at the worst possible time. And that allows us to break outside of a second to Charles Leclerc on fresh tires. That is absolutely huge. Meanwhile, the other race leaders are boxing. Sergio Perez going to hards. And, well, dive bomb there from Leclerc. Re-overtakes us. So forget about that gap we had. That is now evaporated. Um, and, and back on the tyre strategy, it was Lewis Hamilton going on medium. So Hamilton's going to be pretty quick initially. Perez will be the long-term threat on the hards for us on old mediums. Or they're going to be fairly well knackered mediums by the end of this race. Still 18 laps remaining in this one. As soon as we hit over 25-30% on the tyre wear, we're going to see a bit of a drop-off in terms of natural pace. So from then on, I I'm thinking around lap 23-24, things are going to get harder for us. Things are going to get much harder. So we need to, again, like we did in the sprint race, like we did earlier on in this stint, not get too excited and uh, try and not take too much life out of these tyres. I've heard rumours as well. And, you know, the esports drivers and stuff don't want you to know this, but I think there's wear on, on the tires when you go over, like, curbs and stuff. I, I, the only reason why I say that, esports drivers don't want to give away anything performance-wise. Hence why they hate Alex Gillen right now for giving away all the tire info in his video the other day. There you go, Alex. There's some free promo. But, uh, yeah, I think there might be some... Uh, logic to this, that uh, if you use curves, certainly if you row up against barriers, you are going to put a crazy amount of excess tyre wear on the tyre that makes contact with the wall. So I wouldn't be surprised to see extra tyre wear when you run over curbs or even go on grass, potentially even marbles too. But um, yeah, long story short. Okay, short story long. Uh, I am attempting to not... Uh, go on the curbs as much while I'm in the slipstream of cars ahead just to really look after the tires that we have Meanwhile Titanic battle between Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso side by side They run through the middle sector Hamilton trying to hang it around the outside on his better tires better car No, not quite not anymore Hamilton did have the better car in the early part of the season Aston Martin now has the ascendancy But Alonso fighting very hard now as he now has to run the outside line for a couple of corners, and it's Hamilton. Hamilton gets through, but Alonso somehow makes it work all the way around the outside at the last corner. Fair play from Fernando Alonso for never giving up there, despite having the outside line. It never usually works, but Hamilton left him the space, and Alonso had the kahunis to, uh, to pull it off. Absolutely unbelievable. Great racing from the AI. Uh, despite uh, their issues, they, they can put on a good show, it, uh, it seems, from time to time. Side by side with uh, Charlotte Clo now as we try and go around the outside. Every moment, as uh, we put a lot of trust on the inside car not to run wide, not to lock up, not to hit us, and uh, do what happened to Albon all those years ago, fighting for the race win. How his career would have changed if he got that race win on that day. Uh, we'll never know now, but uh, 14 laps remaining in this race, and I feel nervous. I, I I feel like the pace of the Ferrari is just too strong for us to do anything about. They are so quick in a straight line, even with our low wings. Hamilton now is going to get in the mix and go up the inside of both of us, heading into turn three. He's made the move stick. We're going to go for the switchback on both of them, punch it out of here in second gear. Thank goodness. For the new handling model because I wouldn't have been able to get a switchback that good. Flooring the power in second gear. And again, we make Leclerc, or a Ferrari rather, look silly on that start finish straight. Mwah. Into the lead of the Grand Prix once again. Things you love to see. Hopefully now Hamilton can get involved with Leclerc and start to hold them up. Start battling. Maybe they can use a little bit more of their tyre and uh, things can come to us a little bit. The one I'm worried about, and I said this earlier, it's Sergio Perez. 1.6 seconds back. Once he gets ahead of Alonso, then we'll really start to get peppered by the Red Bull. And uh, that's that's going to be that's gonna be the battle to watch in the dying laps of this race. Watch out for Perez. Hamilton up the inside. He's the temporary th threat. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think Hamilton, even Leclerc, is going to be much of a threat. As he now boxes, Leclerc is now boxed. So I, I said that was a really early pit stop. Turns out he's doing a two-stop. He's going to softs to get to the end now. 
And now he might even be a massive threat if there's a VSC or... No, if there's a safety car at the back end. Jeez, that's really interesting. I don't know what I'd do in this scenario. Do I box if there's a safety car or do I... Do I hang out and uh, keep the lead of the Grand Prix? Preserve my tire life? That's a decision I hope we don't have to make. At this point, we're building a nice train here. Uh, Lando Norris is very quickly going to join this train as Hamilton goes for an unorthodox move into the last corner. He's compromised his run. We get the DRS. And uh, we should be able to make this work around the outside. It's not real. It's, it's a corner I hate going side by side at turn one. Whenever you go side by side through there, you lose so much time. Not just myself, but the AI as well. Look at this. Case in point. Three wide for those behind. And they lose, like over a second just by doing that not that i'm complaining by the way feel free to do that for the rest of the race guys and i'll be absolutely chilling uh home for my do we say second winner of the season or are we gonna say third i, I don't really think sprint races really count as overall wins so we're gonna say second race of the season but let's not get ahead of ourselves too much it's now alonso fighting us for the lead of the grand prix it seems like everyone today is gonna have a pot shot at me for the race victory <laughs> throw in Perez throw in throw in Norris throw in whoever the hell you want I think Russell's in P6 now but Hamilton now sliding further back down the order it's absolute mayhem here in Austria I, I absolutely love it I love the racing here so many DRS zones very tactical um, it is very hard to get away especially when you don't have the pace of, of everyone else but we, we're seemingly Doing really well in, in this scenario. Our race craft, our consistency, I think our composure more than anything else is really uh, setting us apart from the rest of the field. And uh, I, I think I put the commentator's curse on Norris. I said, come have a go at me. And uh, well, no, the, the McLaren has given up the ghost. That is big points lost for McLaren. They were a previous rival of us. I still say McLaren are a rival for us in the constructors. Uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely not taking these, uh, you know, top three positions for granted. I, we could just as easily go back to fighting for minor points in the next race. I think we've had a string of really good races, really good race tracks that really suit our car or my driving style lately. And we've just been in the right place at the right time, just capitalizing on, uh, you know, misfortune of the AI. We've been absolutely on fire lately. My confidence level, just like personally on the F1 game, has grown exponentially this week compared to last. I was I was a little bit unsure of myself in the braking and you know how to get the most out of it and and, and I really feel like I've made big strides in braking uh, just in the last few days by playing it consecutively and and really getting in the mix. But you can have all the confidence in the world if you don't have the car under you, you're not going to win the race. And that is becoming evident in the closing stages of this race. Sergio Perez takes the lead of the Austrian Grand Prix. Now, his hards are really phasing in nicely. Our mediums are well past, well, they're, they're really in the drop-off zone at this point. So we are, at this point, clinging on for dear life. And I think we're doing more than clinging on. We are fighting for the lead of the Austrian Grand Prix. Our best defense is to turn defense into attack. So uh, that is exactly what we're doing. I don't want Sergio Perez to be in front of me heading into the middle sector. If we allow that to happen, he will win this race. We've got to capitalize when we have DRS and when we're on the part of the track where we are fast, which is the first four corners of this circuit. After this corner, if, if Perez is ahead, he is gone in this race. So we're fighting extra hard to make sure that we stay ahead through this part of the circuit. He has a little look through the first left-hander. Unable to make it work. Thank goodness for the dirty air. And, and, well, just our car being in the way. We are doing just enough at this stage. We spent, you know, a, a good portion of this race trying to charge up our battery for this fight. We knew it was coming. And uh, this, this is what we prepared ourselves for. So, hopefully, that can continue. Russell having to go at Perez uh, just allows me to have a little bit of breathing room. It allows me to... You know, not use the battery for a straight. And that's a difference of like 10, 15% in terms of battery usage compared to spam it in overtake, for example. So every little bit counts. Russell now 
into the lead of this Austrian Grand Prix. And this one, I'm not so sure about. We're heading on to the penultimate lap, and I don't know the pace of that Mercedes. They might have the freshest tires in the whole field. They might have incredible straight line speed. I just don't know. So I'd like to keep this guy behind me if we can. Round the outside of turn three, punch it in overtake, and we have the lead once again. And now I think we might be okay, guys, as we head on to the last lap. Look at the battery we have left, just under 50%. So we can pretty much go full send with the battery for the rest of this race. That's why that overtake on Russell was so important to make sure we were still in the lead. And we had that margin, we had that buffer, so that if someone started using their battery, we could just respond with our battery as well. But uh, it looks like we're going to hold on. We are going to hold on to the lead of this Austrian Grand Prix. And I'm going to put my neck out here and say that we have the oldest tyres in the field. Against all odds, we've managed to fend off seven, eight drivers to get our second win of this season. That's a race win and your second race win in a row. Fantastic job. F123 threw everything at me today. Nearly half the field contesting for that win. That's nuts. That's it then for another spectacular Grand Prix here in Austria. And a truly magnificent drive to hang on and take the win. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, they certainly stood out as a drive with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. Oh my word. Get in there, lads. We have won another race on F122. We've got maximum points. Maximum points in this car. It's, it's beyond belief now what we've achieved in this car. It's been absolutely ridiculous. Eight points in the sprint race today, uh, yesterday. 25 points today. I think we even got fastest lap as well. We set the fastest lap early on in the race. And I guess because we plonked our car in front of everyone for most of the Grand Prix, no one actually went faster. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. So that is the most points I will ever score as a driver through the whole of this career mode. It doesn't get any, get, doesn't get any better than that. That is absolutely ridiculous. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more career mode F123 content. That round was was unbelievable. We were on fire right from where, right from word go. Um, P4 in qualifying, we we edged our way forward in the sprint, and we just stayed there the rest of the weekend. It was well managed. We nearly lost it when uh, Leclerc undercut us, uh, but it turned out that was an undercut too strong for him to go to the end. Had to do an emergency, not, not an emergency, but had to do an extra stop to uh, make sure he got to the end. And I think he got a bit unlucky with the traffic. If Leclerc rejoins in traffic and stays out for the rest of the race, Leclerc wins that race. It's as simple as that. But we got very lucky. We got very lucky with the traffic. We overtook him and, uh, you know, a bit, of, a, a bit of management from our side in there as well. Definitely having to look after the tires and making sure that they didn't fall off as much of a cliff as they could have. And uh, yeah, we, we managed to win the race somehow. P6 in the driver's standings. We're now moving to triple digits for points tally uh, this season. I think our sponsor goal was was only eighth in the constructors. And I think, you know, eighth, you're probably looking at 40 points maximum. So I think, I think we're already there in terms of the end of season goal now at this point. Or even stretching away from, from Aston Martin. It's been, it's been that ridiculous. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I've not had a start to any career mode in a what is supposed to be a backmarker team this good before. It's it's crazy. I, I really don't understand what we've done and, and what we continue to do. Uh, but it, it just seems to be all coming up Millhouse. So, uh, yeah, happy times. And uh, we've still got upgrades to put on, as do many of the other teams. So... Yeah, that's this race from today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, 4.69 million 
in the old bankaroonie. And uh, that means we're, we can probably spend a bit of cash on a good driver. Whether a good driver wants to sign for us is another issue because they'll have their prerequ prerequisites for like facilities and uh, point standing and all that boring stuff, which we don't need to talk about today. But uh, we'll leave that for another episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you next time.